the seventh edition of CNU TV, your only source for video news on campus. I'm Katie Harden. And I'm Patrick Nightingale. Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we'll be bringing you the latest news, sports, and arts and entertainment. But first in CNU news, Quidditch came to CNU this past week as the Potomac River Hall Council organized the first ever CNU Muggle Quidditch Cup at 2 p.m. on Sunday, November 8th. It was based on the fictional sport from Harry Potter series created by J.K. Rowling. Also, heavy rains and high-speed winds from the November Nor'easter closed the campus of CNU last Thursday and Friday due to the extremely hazardous conditions. Over three inches of rain fell Wednesday evening, causing water swells to reach 7.74 feet at high tide. Late Thursday, November 12th, Governor Tim Kaine declared an official state of emergency in the Hampton Roads area due to the heavy rainfall and the intense winds, which were clocked up to 75 miles per hour. The Virginian pilot reported that 178,000 area residents were without power during the storm and hundreds of people were evacuated from their homes and relocated to area shelters. Although the storm was intense, no damage was reported on campus of CNU. In local news, Tina Vick sat down with CNU TV's own Victoria Shirley to discuss the happenings in Newport News. They have this formula that says if the more home ownership you have in an area, the more likely it is for people to invest in your community businesses, which is what we need. Um, you know, one of the things I felt really uh, that was really important for me, one other investors to invest in this district and in my community is, I would be remiss in asking somebody else to do, to uh, invest if I didn't. So I made sure I put my business. Uh, Tina L. Vic Realty and Development is on Chestnut Avenue, and this is my house right here on 6th and Ivy Avenue in Newport News because I feel like it's, if we're going to ask other people to invest, we should be serious and invest in our own communities. So for the next four, three years I have left, I really want to do more to try to, um, you know, work with codes and the city manager on, you know, getting things right in this community. Thanks, Victoria. It's always great for CNU students to find out what's going on in the community they live in. I agree. It's never good to pretend that we're the only ones living in this city. Now let's head over to the weather desk to see what lies ahead for our weekly forecast. How's the weather looking for Thanksgiving, Seth? It's going to be a cold Thanksgiving here in Newport News, Katie. I'm Seth Wagoner here with your weather. Let's take a look at the Doppler. It's going to be a little bit of pressure creeping up from the Midwest going into the northeastern portion of the country. Uh, those regions will see a little bit of rain, maybe even some snow around Missouri. But it doesn't look like anything for us to worry about here, over here in Newport News. Now let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Tomorrow we're going to see a high of 65 degrees with a low of 57. Be ready for some rain as well with a 50% chance of precipitation. Going into the weekend, we'll have a high of 64 and a low of 46 degrees. It's going to start to get even cooler on Saturday with a high of 61 and a low of 48. Not getting any better on Sunday for a high of 59 and a low of 50 degrees. We'll start in next week with a high of 66, however, with a chance of rain and a low of 48. And as for Thanksgiving break, bundle up and expect some showers. If you're going shopping on Black Friday, I'd suggest looking for a coat. Back to Patrick and Katie in the studio. Thanks, Seth. Looks like it's going to be a chilly Thanksgiving. Make sure to bring your jacket when you go to grandmother's house. Psi Upsilon is a brand new fraternity here on campus that is trying to get recognized by CNU. CNU TV's Victoria Shirley caught up with ex External Affairs Chair Reed Ruddy to get the scoop. My name is Reed Ruddy and I'm a junior here and I've always had an appreciation for what Greek life brought to the, to, to the college atmosphere. But for some reason or another, uh, a large group of my friends and I had never really fit into one of those groups and we decided that we didn't want to miss our chance to, to appreciate Greek life and become a part of that. So we... Uh, decided we'd like to start our own fraternity. Currently we're a colony and what that means is that we've been officially brought in as a, a pledge class. We've hoped to get recognized nationally and then once we've organized ourselves and gotten grounded there we hope to push to become fully recognized on campus. And So we hope that all that will happen before the fall of uh, next year. I think it's been a phenomenal experience. I really couldn't compare it to anything else. It's been the highlight of my college career. I, the only thing I can compare it to is like trying to start a small business. There's been incredible highs, there's been incredible lows. I feel like Psy Upsilon has allowed me to become a, a man and really grow up and learn about personal responsibility and, and accomplishing things. 
Thanks, Victoria. On another note, what's been going on in the CNU sports world, Cassie? Two fall sports here at CNU are taking their play up a notch as they head into the NCAA tournament. I'm Cassie Vinch here with your CNU sports update. With a lot of action, heart, and determination, it was a good weekend overall. The CNU men's soccer team is trying to take their season all the way to the end as they defeated Lynchburg on Sunday, taking them to the Sweet 16 round of the NCAA tournament. In nothing but dramatic fashion, the men were able to make all four penalty kicks during the shootoff. CNU captain's goalie Justin Wolf was able to prevent two shots from scoring for Lynchburg, giving CNU the win. The CNU volleyball team is heading to the Elite Eight as their record currently stands at 36-6. Getting there wasn't all that easy after the lady captains dropped their first two sets to Salisbury on Saturday during the regional championship in New York. However, they were able to battle back and win the next three sets to take the match and head to the NCAA tournament. Their play resumes on Thursday as they travel to Cleveland, Ohio to take on Wisconsin Oshkosh in hopes to advance to the Final Four. The semifinals and championship games will be held on Friday and Saturday to determine the best D3 women's volleyball team in the nation. Let's go, Lady Captains! Basketball season is right around the corner as the men's team takes on Virginia Wesleyan on Tuesday in the Freeman Center at 7.30 p.m. The Lady Ballers are taking on Washington and Lee University at home as well on Saturday with a 4 p.m. start time. Be sure to check out the games and cheer loud for your captains. If you cannot actually attend either of the NCAA tournaments, be sure to wish all the athletes the best of luck. All facts and information are provided by CNUsports.com. That wraps it up over here in the sports world. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Cassie. It's always good to keep up with CNU Sports. Now let's find out what's been going on lately with our arts and entertainment anchor. Susan? There's always entertaining events going on at CNU, Katie. Bringing you your arts and entertainment news, I'm Susan Mbawika. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? Jim Henson's famed Muppets on Sesame Street celebrated their 40th anniversary last week since their debut on PBS on November 10, 1969. Big Bird and the rest of the Muppet gang have impacted the lives of children and adults alike. The Muppets entertain young children with word and number games, while adults watching the show are human with pop culture parodies. Some have included Desperate Houseplants, in reference to the TV drama Desperate Housewives, and Law & Order Special Letters Unit, a reference to the TV crime drama Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Sesame Street should continue to maintain its legacy for many generations of children and adults to come. Well, that wraps it up for Arts and Entertainment. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Susan. It's always great to hear about the A&E side of our campus. Well, that about does it for this episode of CNU TV. I'm Patrick Nightingale. And I'm Katie Harden. For more information on any of the stories seen here today, check out the weekly issue of The Captain's Log. And stay tuned for our next broadcast on December 2nd.